Kazakhstan is one of the most multinational countries which gathered representatives of more than 130 ethnicities and nations. Each ethnicity has unique traditions, inimitable holidays, interesting stories and amazing recipes. Recipes of kindness and peace, recipes of respect to your own roots and other people's culture, recipes for friendship. Hello, you are watching Recipe for Friendship. My name is Aleftina Majarova and today together we will learn the details of an interesting wedding ceremony. We will plunge into the history of an unusual dance and of course we will meet amazing people. Today in the center of our program, the Crimean Tatars. We already talked about the culture of these wonderful people in one of our programs. And now here is a new chapter of the story. In today's program, we will see how a groom is being prepared for the wedding in accordance with the rules of the old tradition, Trash Gadgesi. We will meet representatives of the Crimean Tatar Ethnos. Our sport, fencing, is practiced in 120 countries. For example, at the Olympic Games in Brazil, only 8 out of 120 countries were admitted to the competition. Can you imagine? What a rigorous recruitment and selection process! Let's admire a very unusual dance! And as always, learn more about the diversity of cultures and ethnic groups that live in our Kazakhstan. Just like perhaps among all different nations, in the Crimean Tatar culture, the most interesting and at times unusual ceremonies are connected with wedding. The holiday of Kna Gejesi or the Night of Henna, when the bride paints her hands on the eve of the wedding, became one of the most memorable and beautiful among the events that we visited. But after all, marriage is about two people coming together. How does a groom prepare for this important day? In principle, the night before the wedding itself is such a celebration in the groom's house. He is solemnly shaved and this action is called a trash gejesi, that is, a night of shaving. A beard is shaved to show that he is now transitioning into a different status, from a bachelor to a married man. The so-called evening of shaving is called Trash Gejesi or Toa Trash, a festive ceremonial shave. In the evening on the eve of the wedding, the festive table is set at the groom's house and only men, usually friends and relatives of the groom, gather to visit. At the same time, in the house of the bride, there is a ceremony of henna gejesi. This evening, the girl should be dressed in a new dress, red, lilac or white. Before the ceremony, they put on her a long to the floor embroidered kaftan. The bride is seated in the middle of the room wearing this kaftan. Around the bride, people dance the Koran dance. After the girl was covered with Marama, her mother-in-law comes to her, the girl at this time clenches fists. And what do the clenched fists mean? It's modesty because she knows she will be presented with a golden accessory. In ancient times they would put a gold coin in the hands of a bride. This is another symbol, a symbol of prosperity, wishes of prosperity to a future family. 
Two of these evenings are inseparably connected. Rituals take place at the same time and even shaving accessories for the trash gadgets are passed on to the groom from his future in-law's house. And this is the very moment when the trash gadgets and Hannah gadgets intersect, because it is from the house of the bride to the groom's house that everything necessary for the further right is transferred to the house. The girlfriend of the future wife on a beautiful tray sends the shaving helper to the bride's representative, as always in a beautifully embroidered case, as well as a special gift from the bride, a hand-embroidered towel since Crimean women, as we'll remember, were famous for the art of embroidering, which is still not forgotten. Well, after the transfer of attributes, the fun begins. In the houses there are mostly men, that is, only men, because the girls at this time are having their own bachelorette, and in parallel the groom has his own trash gadgetsi. The celebration takes place in a cheerful manner. A special barber who is shaving him in a playful manner is invited. He mocks the groom a little bit. Sometimes they leave the groom covered in soap for a few hours, and gradually his friends dance around him, they arrange some contests, they try to show him that life seemed so sweet that it was a pity to part with a bachelor's life. A special character without which the evening would be impossible is a barber. Barber plays a very honorable mission in this event, and as a rule he can earn very good money, so one should be very careful in choosing a barber's profession. In addition to that, he should manage a dangerous razor famously and beautifully. And a traditional shave is done precisely with a dangerous razor. His charisma and ability to keep a crowd are also important. This action can last for hours. Groom covered in soap, half shaved, should carry out tasks of the visitors, dance with them. In other words, do whatever the guests or the barber tell him to do. The competitions are held at home, the table is laid as always. Traditional dishes, sweets, are ready when he is all shaved, the next morning he sends his representatives to the bride. Among the key items involved in this venture is a hat in which all participants throw money. For every dance of the groom, guests pay the barber. Yes, it is the barber who finally receives the festive reward and therefore in his interests to conduct the rite as cheerfully as possible and to prolong it for as long as possible. When he shaved and everyone had enough fun, he receives henna from the bride. His fingers are dipped in there, that's all. He finally turns into the groom who is no longer a free man. That's all. Just a groom, a future husband. Together with shaving accessories from the bride, henna is also passed, with which the hands of his future wife are painted. This same henna stains stay on groom's thumbs. Here, it is done. The final part of the pre-wedding ceremony happens in the morning at the parents' house. And then the parents put a cap on the groom's head, the belt and sash. Handgear is changed from skull cap to a cap. A special sash becomes a testament to the new status of the young man. Ahead, there is a magnificent wedding awaits for him. In the age of globalization, of course, to see the wedding, which is done according to all the traditions, is not so simple. Nevertheless, young people are increasingly interested in ancient customs. More and more young people choose the traditional style of the organization of the holiday and with pleasure dress up for such rites. Maybe you will one day be lucky to see such a holiday 
and take part in it. Contrary to the widespread misconception, the word Tatars in the ethnonym Crimean Tatars is nothing more than a distortion entrenched since the time of the Russian Empire. The ethnos which once formed the main population of the Crimean Peninsula are ethnically closer to the Black Sea Turks and have a lot in common with Caucasian tribes. But they have no relations to the so-called Kazan Tatars. Just like the once Chechens, Karachais and other people, the Crimean people were hastily deported on a false charge of treason and collaborationism in May 1944. However, whatever the fate of these people was, they preserve their culture and succeed in various fields. An amazing fact of the four stars who represent Kazakhstan's fencing in the international arena, I would like to find out more about it, frankly. Fencing, which is rightfully considered an elite sport in Kazakhstan, as if to say, not in sight. There are not so many training bases and specially equipped halls in our country. But here is a surprise. Our athletes, our team is among the top 10 in the world. We arrived from Canada today. There was another stage of competition. There is a series of stages now. We performed well. We barely missed a medal, lost to the Italian team. Well, the next tournament I think will be better. Eldar Alimjanov has been training fencers for more than 20 years and it is not surprising that his son chose this sport too. The head coach of the Republic in fencing on swords among men. Here's how. How did it happen that both the coach is Crimean Tatar and the main stars are Crimean Tatars? Well, of course, we have a selection system, a point system where at each competition the fellows win certain places. These places give points and according to the scoring points we choose the national team, which then represents Kazakhstan at the World Championships, at the World Cups, at the Olympic Games and so on. But in any case, the fact that three representatives of such a minority were in the national team, this, of course, is music to my ears. I myself am a Crimean Tatar. My name is Eldar Alimjanov. My father, born in 1919, a war veteran, a participant in all events that happened to our people. And I got carried away with this sport and the fact that it has representatives of our people, of course, I'm proud of it. So there is no such national historical tradition there? No, it happened this way. It is pleasant that three of Crimean Tatars out of four are part of the national team. But this is for today. The success of our team is impressive. For the Olympic Games, for example, out of 120 countries, only eight were selected for fencing competitions. And Kazakhstani people have passed this most severe selection. Another interesting acquaintance took place in a completely different situation. The pride of the Crimean Tatar diaspora is the artist Reshad Aliyev. In the paintings of Aliyev there is neither aggression nor negativity. All the subjects are in harmony and beauty with surrounding environment. It is not surprising that many subjects of his paintings are the beauties of the Zaili Alatau, Turgen, Kazakhstani mountains and steppes. Reshad Aliyev's paintings are exhibited in the galleries of Kazakhstan, his exhibitions are successfully held abroad and often he creates by the order. For example, recently he had to write a canvas the size of 3 by 5 meters. Such a gift our diplomatic delegation took with them on a foreign trip. Aliyev creates easily, the pain of creativity is not a frequent guest in his studio. But back to the magic of folk traditions. Further in the program, we will see amazing beauty and grace of dance, the name of which is Tim Tim. This dance is not in vain called the embodiment of refinement and female coquetry. 
The key feature of it is that the dancer and the accompanist here work as if in duet and much depends on how well they understand each other. There were only a few of the masters of this genre even in the past, because in this case the preparation and special talent are important. And now to admire the Tim Tim is festivity for our eyes. Of course the origin of this dance is no less beautiful than the figure of the dance itself, a legend. Where the tender waves of the sea embrace the rocky shore, in the old days there was a village called Intermountain. It was located between mountains nicest in the whole district, because there were skilled craftsmen whose handicraft products differed in beauty, accuracy and style. But most of the stories were about the girl who came out on a wide glade over the seashore holding a ringing tambourine in her hands. The rare beauty and her musical talent were known far beyond the boundaries of the village. Sounds like Tim 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 gave the name to the dance and a nickname for a performer. The most devoted fan of this dance was a young violinist who set out for days admiring the girl and dreamed of writing special music for her. In one of the evenings, the villagers did not hear their favorite sounds. The stolen beauty was carried by the impetus ship to the Turkish shores, and her future now was to be in the harem of the Sultan. However, fate was favorable to the dancer, and according to the same legend, the Sultan was softened by the lyrical history and beauty of the dance, and therefore, after presenting her with a string of pearls, he let her go home. The return of the Tim Tim to the village became a holiday, and the violinist in love finally wrote a cherished melody. Many girls have since mastered the cherished dance, and in every girl's smile, white as pearls, there is a reminder of this legend shines. That's how the dance Tim Tim was born, where every movement of the body, hands and fingers should correspond to the sound of each violin string. Well, what a dance without music! The rhythms of the Crimean Tatars inspired in their time a lot of classics. A well-known story when Glinka, in communication with his friend Ivazovsky, heard from him national melodies and was so impressed that he used one of them in opera Ruslan and Ludmilla. <laughs> Folk motives of the Crimean Tatars are beautifully transferred to music of different genres, which was used by the Armenian composer Spendiarov, a pupil of Rimsky Korsakov. He reworked the compositions in romances and symphonies. Refat chose this path. He uses folk music to write jazz hits, and he's fantastic. This is international performance, and now we are moving slowly and smoothly into jazz. Custodians of the traditions of this small but rich nation of talents for seven years has been the Vatandash Ethnocultural Center. There are not many Crimean Tatars in Almaty, but this fact does not prevent them from honoring traditions and history. To better immerse ourselves in the culture of the people, we decided to visit their holiday. Our center officially opened in 2010. Of course, the main goal of our center is to preserve our culture, our language, our traditions and customs, so that our children know each other, communicate with each other, preserve their language and our nation. 
язык и нашу нацию. Well, I hope to see you next time in our new amazing adventures. See you soon on Kazakh TV.